the great black sea. the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. What a privilege, what an honor it is to be here at Trinity Baptist Community Church International. Thank God for each of you, and what a wonderful day of celebration this is, to be able to come together and thank God for 21 years of effective ministry. That's something right there, isn't it? 21 years. Wow. Really excited for you. Thank God for your pastor, great man of God, uh, Dr. Bishop Dr. Michael J. Love is a person that is a pace setter. He's a visionary, and uh, as he showed me this place, I was absolutely astounded, absolutely astounded by what I saw and the favor of God that has been on your lives. It's just absolutely incredible. So I'm grateful to be here today and praying that God's richest blessing will be yours. That's my prayer. That is my prayer. Well, I, I want to um, have you turn your attention to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. We're going to begin reading at about verse 21. Again, thank God for your pastor. Thank God for this place. Absolutely amazing. I do bring you greetings from Moody Bible Institute and Moody Radio. Does anyone listen to Moody Radio? Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> well, amen. What a, what a blessing that is. Absolutely, what a blessing. Thank you for listening. Uh, I have the privilege of being on the air on Saturday nights from 8 to 12, so if you like a mixture of Third Day, Twilight Harris, Fred Hammond, Yolanda Adams, and uh, folks like that, uh, that's going to happen for you on that night. Uh, some of you, as you're driving home, you'll hear me, and then you hear Nancy Turner, and she does a great job of, of playing music by uh, Catherine Crown, Third Day, uh, et cetera. So it's just a blessing to be able to, to, to share in that capacity. We're about to do something new, something uh, a little, little more uh, exciting. We've got an urban stream that we're launching, and the urban stream will be on uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. And on the urban stream, you'll, you'll just hear uh, folks like Fred Hammond and, and Yolanda and Israel Houghton and every now and then we'll throw in the Katinas, maybe a little Natalie Grant, et cetera. And so uh, if, if you enjoy music, we'll be getting that station to you real, real soon. Also, uh, we've got a Spanish station that is being launched, uh, AM 1110, and it'll be completely in Spanish, so it's going to be muy bien. And um, yeah, so if you speak Espanol, you will be blessed by that particular channel, AM 1110. All righty. Also, what I'd like to do is, if possible, I'd like for you all to, if I could get maybe six, seven people to fill out an ascertainment form for me. We use this for our FCC, and uh, basically what this does is allows us to find out what you think are some key issues that we as a station should deal with. And so we'd love for six or seven of you, I, I probably have them at a table, the ushers will have them available for you, um, and have you fill fill some of these out for me. Would that be okay? All right, you all are so, so kind. If you have uh, Matthew chapter 15, uh, beginning at verse 21, I'm going to take a look at that right now. Matthew 15, beginning at verse 21. And can I get you to stand with me as we read through this? Matthew 15, beginning at verse 21, it says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. 
my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped. Worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Mm. Lord have mercy. Verse 27, and she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Verse 29, and Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went into a mountain and sat down there. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from this theme, sanctified perseverance. Sanctified perseverance. What will I talk to you about today? Come on, you got to say it a little bit stronger than that. Amen. Amen. Well, let's bow in just a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for allowing us to be together today. And we're praying today that you will move by your spirit. You'll have your way in the midst of us. Let your glory be revealed. Thank you for all that's happened thus far. Oh, the wonderful history that, 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 that we heard and, and the music, the dance, the singing. Just exciting. Even the way the offering was raised, God. Just exciting to see you glorified and magnified like this. So we're asking now that you send your word in power and authority. Send it with an anointing that breaks every yoke and every fetter. The kind of anointing that causes us to look up and live in situations that want us to lay down and die. Cause us to experience an anointing today that cuts to the quick, to the issue that's in our lives and causes us to live. If we ever needed you before, we need you now, right now. So have your way in the midst of us. I want to thank you for what you're about to do, about how you're about to move, what you're about to say. Thank you for Trinity. Thank you for this church. Thank you for 21 years. We celebrate. We magnify. We honor right now. Thank you for your leading, your guiding, your provision. Ah, we give you glory right now. It didn't have to be like this. As a, as a man said, behind the scenes, all kind of things were going on. But God, your grace has brought us safe thus far. And we believe your grace is going to lead us on. Have your way in the midst of us. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I need somebody in here to say, in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Have your way in the name of Jesus. And I want to thank you for victory right now. I want to thank you for dominion right now. I want to thank you for breakthrough right now. Thank you for sending your word in power and authority. In Jesus' name, somebody say, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I just want to sing a little bit. Can I sing just a little bit? Just, just a little bit. I, I'm going to try to work with this mic. If not, then I'm sure they'll throw me another mic, or I guess I can use one of these that's up here. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back then, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's
it's when things start happening when I stop looking at back then I let go and I let God let God have his way let go let God let go and let God let go let God oh let go let God say it after me let go let God let go let God let go let God oh let go let go let God let go let God let go and let God let go let God let go let God as soon as Stop worrying, worrying how the story ends. I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening, when I stop looking at back then. When I let go and I let God, let God have his word. A friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and that one. Clap your hands and give God one more praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, lean on a neighbor, tap a neighbor on the shoulder and say, you got to let go. Let God. You entitled some peace. You entitled to some joy. And all the stuff that's worrying you is not greater than God. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. And you can rest in his wonderful grace. Come on, tell somebody else, let go and let God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I just believe God's going to do great and mighty things in your life. Again, thank God for being here and your wonderful pastor, his lovely wife. Just a wonderful, wonderful couple. God bless you. Amen. Glad to have my mother along with me today and uh, just love her. Thank God for her. I want you all to know I'm grateful for her. Um, I don't say this very often, but I'm, I'm sure she won't mind me telling you that um, well, I'm a drug baby. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not been easy for me, but I'm so grateful to God for 
for her and the wonderful state that she is in. Uh, when I was 14 years old, mama drugged me to Sunday school. <laughs> mama drugged me to choir rehearsal. Mama drugged me to church. Do I have any other drug babies here today? <laughs> Come on, do I have any other drug babies here? You glad to be saved. You glad that mama was there for you. Mama prayed for you. Mama had you in mind. And as a result of God's grace and mama's prayers, I'm here. And you here right now too, amen? So I certainly thank God for her. Certainly Sister Neal is here as well. Many of you know her and amen. Love you, Sister Neal. God bless you. God bless your heart. We were driving out here today, and we weren't quite sure if we had our directions right. And uh, so I was looking for the particular route and everything, and uh, my, my GPS had led me sort of the wrong way, and so I had to check on some things. It reminded me of the police officer who was waiting to give somebody a ticket. Not all police officers are like that, but this one was like that. Car after car went by, 55 miles an hour. One car, a couple of cars were even 54 miles an hour. He said, this is ridiculous. Where are all the lawbreakers at? This is just wrong. What's going on here? Car after car went by. Finally, he saw his chance. An elderly woman was driving by, going 31 miles an hour. He pulled up behind the car, threw on his light, woo, woo, pulled her over, and walked up to her and said, Grandma, what's the problem? Baby, you're driving 31 in a 55-mile-an-hour zone. What's happening here? She said, I am not driving uh, the, 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 something that's against the law. I'm not breaking the law. I'm going just like the sign said. You need to leave me alone. This is elder abuse. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of y'all trying to get in my business. I'm going the speed limit. He said, well, well, man, what do you mean? I saw the sign back there, and that is the rate I'm going. Officer said, well, okay, Granny, calm down for a second. It's all good. Calm down for a second. Uh, what, what you saw was the route number. <laughs> you own the route, but the actual speed is 55. And well, as he's talking, he's looking in the car, and he sees somebody in the front seat, two people in the back seat, and they are looking like they are petrified, like they scared half to death. And so he keeps talking to her for a second. She said, okay, son, I'm so sorry. Oh, please, forgive me. I, I didn't know baby, so please. <laughs> baby, please, you know, don't give grandma a ticket. You're not going to give grandma a ticket, are you? He said, you know what, grandma, I haven't got anybody else. I'm not going to give you a ticket either. I'm just going to give you a warning. It's, it's all good. It's all good. Have a nice day, okay? And he starts to walk away. And just as he walks away, he comes back and he looks in the car again. Person in the front seat is looking like this. Both people in the back seat are looking like this, like they petrified, like they've seen a ghost. He finally says, her, now, what's wrong with your passengers? They look like they're crazy. What happened to them? Well, son, uh, I was just driving on Route 119. <laughs> and I just, I, Grandma, just go ahead on. Just, just go. Just, just, just drive 55, okay? It's sort of funny how you can get your signs mixed up. Not only on the highway, but you can get your signs mixed up in life, can't you? We look at this particular passage of scripture, Jesus is doing what only Jesus can do. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a savior. He can take two fish, five loaves of bread and feed how many people? He can look into a grave, into a tomb and tell Lazarus to come forth. He can, he can be walking in a crowd and a woman with the issue of blood can touch his garment and be made whole. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus can walk in the midst of a storm on the Sea of Galilee and he will not drown, has enough power to say, Peter, come on out here. And even when Peter begins to sink, Jesus has enough power to pull him back up and to restore him till he can get him back to the boat. I'm talking about Jesus. Y'all know Jesus, don't you? He is a way maker. He's a mountain mover. The old folks say he's joy and sorrow, hope for tomorrow. 
He is my all in all. Y'all know Jesus, don't you? He's the lily of the valley, the bright in the morning star. He's alpha, he's omega, he's the beginning, he's the end. He's the first, he's the last. He is Jehovah Roha. He is Jehovah Jireh. Y'all know about Jesus, don't you? The one that was hung up for our hang-ups. Y'all know Jesus, don't you? He got a good reputation with me. Does he have a good reputation with you? Ah, uh, when I see his resume, I find no fault in him. I see no failures in him. He is all that he says he is and more. We look at this particular passage of scripture, chapter 15, and we find Jesus is walking in the land of Tyre and Sidon. Everybody say Tyre and Sidon. This is a heathen land. This is a land that is morally destitute. Even though financially they have got it going on, they are amazing when it comes to their money and their business and political prowess. It's amazing what they've done. I mean, these folks had so much that they felt that they could escape Caesar. And because they were on somewhat of an island, uh, it seemed like it was going to work until Caesar said, we can't get you right now, but we're going to build a bridge to you. And as soon as we get that bridge to you, we're going to conquer you. Because Caesar didn't believe in being defeated. Think about that for a second. Even when you think that you are out of touch, out of reach, of being dominated by the enemy, if you play with fire, eventually you're going to get burned. I, I, I know people, you know people like this, who have said, I can do what I want to do, and even though other fools might have got caught up in what they did, I will never get in trouble. As if you Teflon, as if you stainless steel. As if, No, I'm here to tell you, there is a demon that has your number. There is a devil that has your number. Do not let the devil ride, because if you let him ride, he going to want to drive. Can I, can I get a witness in here? And so the devil showed enough, conquered them, and, and in this particular land, again, they were heathens without hesitation. I'm going to do what I'm big and bad enough to do. <laughs> I'm going to do my thing how I want to do it. They were so destitute, they had temples there. But in the temples, they had temple prostitutes. They were so destitute, they came from a heritage of, of worshiping Asherah. And Asherah was this goddess that was multi-breasted. It was a sex goddess. And they would sacrifice their children to this goddess. Lord have mercy. These were some wicked folks. You would think, why in the world would Jesus walk along the coast of Tyre and Sidon? I got to tell you, he had just left some folks that were worse than them. He had just left some church folks. Some religious folks, some Pharisees and some Sadducees. So some folks. Washing their hands the right way. Huh? There are people that's dying and going to hell, but you're about to try to make a mountain out of a molehill. What are you talking about? He said, you guys are so messed up, you are so toe up from the flow up that, 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 that you have made the laws of God of none effect. God says, honor your father and mother. You say, well, whatever you get from your folks, that's good. You ain't got to respect them. You don't have to honor them. You go against what God has said. It's not an issue of are the hands clean on the, the outside, but is the heart clean on the inside? You all are blind leaders, and let the blind lead the blind. And both of y'all going to fall in a ditch. Jesus wasn't no punk, was he? <laughs> Jesus wasn't no joke at all. He wasn't going to have anybody come to him the wrong way. He was like this, come correct or don't come at all. Hello, somebody. He had just left these folks that were so blinded, that were so hardened, that thought they were religious in the right way, but they were religious in the wrong way. It's one thing for you to be in the church, but the church ought to be in you. I like what the old preachers say, Dr. Love. Uh, you know more uh, of a Christian because you came to church 
than you would be a hamburger if you walked into McDonald's. <laughs> you must be born again. Amen, somebody. As he's inside, out of the shadows, out of the evil darkness, out of this noisy cacophony of sound comes a woman. This woman comes to Jesus and says, I have a daughter that is grievously vexed by a devil. She's possessed. She's oppressed. I need some help. And I've heard about you. I've heard about your reputation. I didn't know you'd be walking through here, but I'm grateful that I have a chance to talk with you, to interact with you. My daughter needs help. I know that you are a helper. I know that you are a healer. Help my daughter, will you please? The Bible says that Jesus answered her, not a word. Lord, have mercy. Not a word, didn't say nothing to her. Just looked at her. No doubt in her mind she might have been thinking, well, I'm a Gentile. He's a Jew, and Jews really don't interact with Gentiles. They think that we're dogs, and maybe that's what's going on. Uh, the standard, the culture of the day was that women didn't speak openly to men. Maybe that's what's going on. I came to him and, and I should have had a man ask for me. Maybe that's what's going on. Silence is a fascinating thing, isn't it? Y'all know about silence, don't you? You, you, you? you sung a song or you said a speech at a school or, or, or uh, even at church sometime, and you laid your heart out. You poured out all that you had, and when you were finished, you put the mic down. And nobody said amen, nobody clapped. It was just silence. That's a bad feeling right there. Y'all know what it's like. You call somebody and say, hey, uh, look here. Uh, girl, I've been watching you. I done had you on my mind. And I know that you've been checking me out as I've been checking you out. And I believe that the time has come for me to let you know that I loves me some you. When you get this message, I want you to call me back. <laughs> that was Monday. Didn't hear from on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Silence is a horrible thing, isn't it? Think about it for a second. In the Bible, we got a man named Job. Y'all know about Job, don't you? Job was a perfect and upright man. He's in the land of us. He's rich. He's got it going on. Everything seems to be going his way. Got a beautiful wife, beautiful family. Got all this cattle, all this land. It's incredible. But then the devil says, will he still serve you if you take all this stuff away? I, I, I got to preach this sermon one day. Maybe you'll preach it one day. A, a, a heavenly conversation that has earthly consequences. <laughs> I, I want to hear you do that, okay? <laughs> preach that, amen. God said, no, he's not going to curse me. The devil said, all right then. Watch. Land, gone. Cattle, gone. His children, gone. Lord, have mercy. He still doesn't curse him. Well, touch, let me touch his body. Then I bet he'll curse you to your face. I'm telling you, he's not going to do it. Yes, he will. His health is gone. Boils from the soles of his feet up to his head in constant pain, constant agony, looks disfigured to the point not only has he lost his stuff and his children, but even his wife says, curse God and die. For seven days his friends come and sit with him in silence. They're not uttering anything. I, I love what Proverbs says. I'm reading a chapter of Proverbs every single day. Proverbs says, even a fool when he's silent is thought to be wise. Isn't that a good proverb right there? Tell your neighbor, shh. <laughs> People will think higher of you. <laughs> but then they begin to talk and they begin to accuse. They begin to say all this stuff about Job. And God was not moving. God was not being involved in his situation. They were talking, the situation was talking, the pain was talking, the grief was talking, Miss Job was talking, but God was silent. I love what Job did in that situation. He said, all the days of my 